I want to read you a short text I wrote about ten years ago about uh, James Joyce and his book Ulysses. I haven't, in fact, reread this text since the last time I read it to check to check the last details before sending it to the printers. So it's a text which is a bit strange even to me. But I'll see if I can read it. I first sailed into James Joyce's Ulysses when I was 14 years old. I use the words sailed into instead of read because, as its title reminds us, the book is like an ocean. You don't read it, you navigate it. Like many people whose childhoods are lonely, I had, by the age of 14, an imagination that was already grown up, ready to put to sea. What it lacked, totally, was experience. I had already read Joyce's portrait of the artist as a young man, and its title was the honorary title I gave to myself in my daydreams. Artist as a young man. A kind of alibi, a kind of seaman's card to show when challenged to the middle-aged or one of their agents. It was the winter of 1940-41. Joyce was in fact dying of a duodenal ulcer in Zurich. But I did not know that then. I didn't think of him as mortal. I knew what he looked like and even that he suffered from bad eyesight. It wasn't that I pictured him as a god, but I felt him through his words, through his endless perambulations, I felt him as ever-present, and so not prone to die. The book had been given me by a friend, uh, who found it in Paris. It was mm, published in Paris by the Shakespeare Company. And when he gave me the book, I believed it was illegal in Britain to own a copy. In fact, this had been the case. It wasn't any longer so. Yet, the supposed illegality of the book was for me, the 14-year-old, a very telling literary quality. And there, perhaps, I was not mistaken. I was convinced that legality was an arbitrary pretense, necessary for the social contract, indispensable for society's survival, but turning its back on most lived experience. And I knew this by instinct. And when I read the book for the first time, I came to appreciate with mounting excitement that its supposed illegality as an object, as to say a book, was more than matched by the illegitimacy of the lives and souls in its epic. Whilst I read the book, the Battle of Britain was being fought in the sky above the southeast of England and London. The country was expecting invasion. No future was certain. Between my legs, I was beginning to become a man. But it was quite possible that I would not live long enough to discover what life was about. And of course, I didn't know. And of course, I didn't believe what I was told, either in history classes, on the radio, or in the, what I called, the basement of my life. All the accounts that I heard, all the things that people were saying, were too small to add up to the immensity of what I did not know and of what I might never have in my life. But Ulysses was different. This book had that immensity. It didn't pretend to it. It was impregnated by it. It flowed through it. To compare the book with an ocean again makes sense. For isn't it the most liquid book ever written? Now, I was about to write. There were many parts during this first reading which I didn't understand. Yet this would have been false. There were no parts that I understood. 
and there was no part that did not make the same promise to me. The promise that deep down, beneath the words, beneath the pretenses, beneath the claims and the everlasting moralistic judgments, beneath the opinions and lessons and boasts and cant of everyday life, the lives of adult men and women were made up of such stuff as this book was made of. Awful, with flecks of the divine in it. The first and last recipe. Even at my young age then, I recognized Joyce's prodigious erudition. He was, in one sense, learning incarnate but learning without solemnity, learning that threw its cap and gown away to become joker and juggler. As I write about him, something of the rhythm of his words still animates my pen. Perhaps even more significant for me at that time was the company, the company his learning kept, the company of the unimportant, those who are forever off stage, the company of publicans and sinners, as the Bible puts it. Low company. Low company. Ulysses is full of the disdain of the represented for those who claim falsely to represent them, and packed with the tender irony of those who are said falsely, said to be lost.